Now, it kind of goes without saying, but we've laid this message on quite heavily over several other video series. When it comes to horror, be it cinematic or in the legendary mythologies of folklore and religion, the mystical and magical place known only as Japan does things quite a bit differently. And by differently, I mean eat your own fist. This stuff is way too scary, and how the hell did they come up with this kind of different? Yeah. Goes without saying, but the legendary yokai of Japanese folklore are a different breed entirely. And thankfully for us, their horrifying canon makes for some equally terrifying tales, so we better take a look. Hello horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the Scary Channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finch, as today, we curiously take a look at the top five scariest Japanese yokai from folklore. Roll the clip. <laughs> Curious amongst you, that scene was from 2007's Carved, based upon the Japanese urban legend Kuchisake Ono, or the Slip Mouth Woman, which, as you may imagine, is quite the fitting visual to set the scene for this particular scary video. But as we will be discovering throughout this list, in the terrifying mysticism of Japan, urban legend and the age old yokai are two very different things, and the latter, the older one, is far, far more terrifying. I guess you better take a look then, right? Kick it off at number five. The Kasha. And if you're fond of cats, which, come on, cats are awesome, then this particular yokai of legend may make you think twice about our furry bundles of friendship and despondence. In fact, cats in Japanese folklore are incredibly important creatures, and it is believed that as a cat ages and its tail grows longer, it develops latent magical powers, often turning into helpful entities or, in some cases, vile demonic entities. Let me introduce you to the Kasha, a particular type of monster cat taking the formation of large bipedal felines that eventually grow even larger than a human. The Kasha are often accompanied by streaks of hellish flames or bundles of charged lightning appearing late at night during rainy or stormy weather, which has earned them the bizarre cultural name the Kasha, which translates loosely to fire car. And believe me, their namesake is just the beginning of the strange, unnerving presence of the Kasha. Being Bake Nico or monster cats, the Kasha live freely amongst humans, disguising themselves as ordinary house cats or strays. However, there is one cultural procession that causes the Kasha to lose all all sense of its disguise, revealing their true forms during funeral services, where the Kasha will leap down from rooftops, snatching corpses straight out of their coffins to feast upon, carrying the deceased bodies away into the night, never to be seen again. The Kasha are considered messengers or servants of hell, where they are tasked with collecting the corpses of particularly wicked humans, spiriting them away to the infernal depths for a lifetime of punishment. In some cases, though, the Kasha become so addicted to feasting upon corpses that they operate solely for their own needs, stealing corpses for the their own uses, reanimating them like some strange feline necromancer with an army of shambling human corpses. Yeah, the Kasha don't exactly make the best of pets. Look out. Swinging in at number four, Makoshi Nyuru. And if you're ever strolling through rural Japan on a particularly quiet road, you better hope to high heaven that you don't run into this particularly terrifying monstrosity. Makoshi Nyuru, which literally translates to anticipating priest, is one of the most fearsome yokai in Japanese folklore, who often appear to lone travelers on any empty streets or at intersections, lonely bridges, and often late at night. They appear to lone travellers as harmless travelling priests, kindly old men or monks of an average height, no taller than an ordinary person. However, if you don't perfectly anticipate the Nyoru's tricks, they can instantly become abnormally tall, often their necks growing to a massive size, revealing their long claws and hair like a wild beast, where they'll lunge forward and bite their victim's throat out with their teeth. In fact, this particular yokai is so oddly specific that the true fear of it comes from not understanding Japanese customs by failing to understand how to defeat this strange, monstrous priest. You see, the only possible escape from the anticipating priest is to do exactly that. Anticipate it, and before it can grow to its true size, you have to meet it face to face, eye to eye, showing no ounce of fear. Then you look from its head back down to its feet, and if this process is done correctly, the priest will be fully anticipated, which then causes its power to grow to a gigantic size to be sapped, where it is then said to vanish in anger, leaving the traveller to pass safely, and obviously your throat safe and sound and not bitten out by a giant old man. I mean, that's a good trick to know, right? It's pretty useful. Obviously this yokai originated from the necessity to look where you're going when travelling through the countryside, which is an important one really, because you'll never know who or what you'll bump into. Hopefully it's not the Makoshi Nyuru, because it's scary. Next up at number three, 
Yuki Onna, which makes up one of the many honour of Japanese yokai, women who personify the magical properties of nature and the power of the elements, whilst also personifying the malevolence of perturbed spirits that seek vengeance on the living. Yuki Onna is perhaps the most deadly of them all, the snow woman that lives deep in mountain passes, appearing anywhere that there is heavy and dense snowfall. The Yuki Onna prey on travellers that are lost in the heavy snowstorms that often blanket the Japanese Alps during the dark heart of winter. Without a doubt, the Yuki Onna possesses an otherworldly beauty with long black hair and piercing eyes coloured in a deep violet. Their skin is ageless, as smooth as porcelain and as white as snow. Their body is as cold as ice and just a mere touch or the brush of a hand is enough to give a passerby a deep unshakable chill. The Yuki Onna feeds solely on human life force, often sucking it from their mouths and breathing it into them with an icy breath that then freezes their victims solid, encasing them in a tomb of ice. There are many, many tales of the Yuki Onna taking the life force of her victims out in the snowy mountain regions of Japan. But perhaps the most bizarre instance is that the Yuki Onna sometimes fall in love with their intended prey, letting them go free and then taking them as their husbands. In some cases, as supernatural beings that never age, their husbands usually wisen up to the fact that they've unwittingly married an ice queen, where upon discovery the Yuki Onna will go on a rage fueled rampage and break into the homes of all their neighbouring villagers, flash freezing every single soul in sight and leaving the village forever in case in an icy tomb. Yeah, you can't really win with this one. Coming up at number two, Kurobuzu. And this one is pretty damn vile, and by function alone, the Kurobuzu is perhaps one of the most terrifying yokai in the whole of Japanese folklore, and there's not much that you can do to combat it either. Literally translating to black monk, a Kurobuzu is a dark, shadowy yokai of pure dark energy that roughly resembles a bald headed Buddhist monk. However, those that glimpse the Kurobuzu often find its appearance to be vague and difficult to describe or make out. Its entire body is black and it wears black robes made of pure shadow. Its face resembles that of a wild beast with pointed teeth and thin slits for eyes. And here's the worst part. The Kurobuzu has a long putrid tongue that it uses to lick its victims in a process that slowly poisons them whilst they sleep, often over a period of days and weeks of repeated visits. And once it's latched onto you, there's not a lot they can do about it, really. The Kurobuzu haunt built up areas such as cities and towns and thrive where there are humans. They only ever come at night sneaking into houses whilst everyone inside sleeps although they're smelt before they're ever seen. A Kurobuzu reeks of rotting fish and vile garbage, and they exist solely to creep up to their victims, which are primarily women, whilst they sleep, where they then suck out their victims' breath from their mouths, sliding their putrid tongues into their mouths, ears, and over their faces. Yeah, exactly. I told you this one was vile. It's believed that the Kurobuzu didn't appear in folklore until the late Meiji period, which ran from 1868 until 1912. And the origin of its inception as a yokai was thought to be based upon a homogeneity of other other more ancient yokai that had adapted and morphed their appearance to a more modern depiction. If that's the case, the Kurobuzu is much weirder than it first let on, and that's why the whole face licking thing and the function of its malevolent motives remain a bizarre cultural mystery. And finally, coming in at a number one spot, the Oni. And we can't really do this list without sticking these horrifying entities right at our number one top spot. Because without the terrifying Oni, Japanese folklore may have turned out to be a completely different kettle of fish. Monic fish, of course. Because come on, this is the Okai. Whilst there are many different versions of the Oni, many of which could find their place on this list, the entire race of iconic demon men are without a doubt the ultimate villains of Japanese folklore and mythology, pitting themselves eternally against the forces of mankind. In fact, originally all of the spirits, ghosts, and monsters of the Yokai were referred to as Oni, where the root of its name means hidden or concealed, written alongside the Chinese character for ghost. Gradually though, as the canon of yokai folklore expanded, the Oni were reserved only for the male demons that are born after truly wicked humans die. The Oni are created when an evil human soul ends up in one of the many Buddhist houses, where they then transform into the Oni, ogreish and brutal servants of the great lord Enma, ruler of the infernal underworld. Now, unlike the familiar demons of Abrahamic mythology, the Oni that are more wicked than their other evil brethren are bound to remain on earth to terrorise the living. This is where the Oni of legend take their many different forms as the fact of the matter remains that no two Oni are the same. Although that's not to say that they don't have their familiarities. The Oni have crimson red or dark blue skin, wild beast like hair, at least two horns and fang like tusks that protrude from their jaws. The Oni wear loincloths made from the pelts of great beasts that they feasted upon as these demons are extremely strong and capable hunters and in many cases the Oni that remain 
remain on Earth are also incredibly powerful sorcerers. Perhaps the most famous of all Oni is Shutenduji, the demon lord that was killed by the brave hero Minamoto Raiko. During his reign, Shutenduji was said to be responsible for thousands upon thousands of abductions, capturing young girls and imprisoning them in his mountain lair. Here, as the Oni lord entertained his other demonic brethren, they would feast upon the slaughtered victims, eating their flesh in massive banquets and drinking their blood like wine. Yeah, there's a lot to it, but as far as the yokai are concerned, they don't get much more evil than the Oni. Well, there we have it, folks. That list for the top five scariest Japanese yokai from Legend. What do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree? Have any more to add to this list? Then let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Before we depart from today's video, though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from the past few days. The immortal super being says, at the end of this, Jack Finch is going to be a monster. The Fincher. Uh, I don't know. The Fincher doesn't sound all that scary. Does it? I just sound like some kind of accomplished director called David. What about the bloody Fincher or the swamp Fincher? Yeah, something like that. What do you guys think? Well, on that monstrous note, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Cheers, sticking around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe button. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You'll be watching top five scary videos. And until next time, please take it easy.